And now, Duncan, you raced at the 1990 event in the very same Alexis that you continue to race in the Formula Junior race at the Classic. And that was one of the very first Alexis ever built. I mean, how much tender, loving care does a car need to keep it race ready? Well, well interestingly, that, that was only my second ever race in that car. And since then, um, I, I've done... 628 races in the same car <laughs> wow. uh, since that event. Um, so uh, what does it take? Um, in the early days, I mean, I just put it on a trailer um, and it rolled up to the track and I rolled it off and <laughs> we put, put air in the tires and, and uh, petrol in the tank <laughs> and went racing. Um, uh, things have developed a little bit now. Um, I got rather spoilt when we were in America and um, I had someone looking after it. And then since we've come back a few years ago, um, uh, Ian Rowley now looks after it and, and takes it to the track. Um, also, it gives me more time to go and talk to other drivers and, and the like. But for, 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 for a general Formula Junior, I mean, I, I would say that well over half of our drivers in the UK roll up with their own cars, yeah, do their yeah. own maintenance. Um, some still on lovely old Don Parker trailers um, <laughs> going back to the 1950s. Um, yeah, there's more and more perhaps who have some professional attention. Um, yeah. And on this continent, there's more than that. But it's, it's, it's a really affordable sport. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, it's, it's terrific cars. You know, you know, they really are. Formula, Formula Junior was always about providing drivers with an entry level class. Because I, I was a little eight year old kid in the grandstands watching Jim <laughs> Clark. Uh, win his, uh, well, his second Formula Junior race in that Lotus 18, racing against John Surtees. So uh, I, I became a passionate fan of Jim Clark watching him racing in Formula Junior. And I mean, the, thing, the great thing about it when it was introduced, that, you know, that, that teams, you could use inexpensive mechanical components from ordinary cars, you know, to get started, you didn't have to have a huge financial investment. So, I mean, do you think your grid still provides that accessible opportunity or the cars becoming a bit more expensive? And no, special? well, well I, I think in, in the context of, of overall prices, our cars are actually maintaining a very sensible level. I mean, you can get into Formula Junior uh, around 30, late £30,000 into a, a, a very nice car. Um, okay, not in the, the Lotus 27 mode. Um, <laughs> But, but there's a, there's a latest 20, sorry, 22 just come for sale in Australia. A very nice one, great history, um, full J chassis number and everything. It's only £70,000. Okay, you've got to get it back from Australia. Um, but, you know, so you're talking of under £100,000, well under £100,000 for a, 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 a very nice competitive car. And my it's goodness, it, it is really competitive now. Me being a Formula Ford driver, we're only about twenty to thirty thousand pounds. So you know you're a bit. Well, I, 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 I wonder. I wonder if if you really still are. But anyway. But I mean, I mean, of course, your Alexis is front end. There's this big divide in Formula Junior. You've got the two sort of histories. The front. You've never been tempted to move into the quicker rear engine category yourself. I mean, I, I have. I have driven rear engine cars. Um, I've driven two or three Lotus 18s. Uh, I've driven the Elva 200. Um, I owned the Deep Sanderson uh, DS-104, uh, which was the last one built by Chris Lawrence. Um, so, I mean, I've but had a bit of... I've, I've, even, I've even driven the Lotus 20, not, not, not terribly successfully, <laughs> in my early days, perhaps I was trying a little bit too hard. But you still um, prefer the front engine, do you, the original junior? Well, I, I, I love it. I mean, I'm not terribly competitive, um, but the great thing about Formula Junior is, is that you, you can have you know, a dice with somebody wherever you are. We might have to life. cut for a minute. We might have to just ask that question. Stupid thing. Why is nobody answering? You're at home um, too. Yeah, I know. Martin, how do we cut in? I've got the whole question again. Were you listening when that bloody phone rang? I'm just going to um, I'm just going to ask Michelle. Michelle, is there a graphic or something they can go to, to 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 hide the edit if we just pick up on this question? I just redo that say, that question. It came in just when I said I said, "Do not fancy switching." Yeah. yeah, I think if we do the front engine question again, that would be yeah. amazing. Cool. Here we go. <clears throat> 
Um, right, we're going bum 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 bum. I've got a different picture now. Martin, you're still in my picture. A slightly different frame. I'm not sure why that's happened. I'm watching the recording back and I'm not in that. So if you can tolerate it, um, we'll go. All right. Hold on, now the door's open. I'm right in the middle of me production. <laughs> Who is it? Yeah, all right. Well, later, later, later. Ten minutes. <laughs> right, we're on again, Duncan. <laughs> um, uh, you, you, you I'll, ask, I'll ask the question again. I'll ask the question again. So, of course, you, you've always stuck to the front engine cars, the original juniors. Are you always happy there, or do you think maybe you'll change one day? No, I, I certainly won't change now. But I have had the opportunity of racing uh, other rear engine cars. Um, I've raced two or three Lotus 18s. I've raced uh, an Elva 200, which I really enjoyed and actually felt going really quite quite competitively uh, yeah. at Goodwood. Um, I owned the, uh, and had restored uh, Chris Lawrence's last Deep Sanderson Formula Junior, DS104. Um, and I raced a Lotus 20 at, at Goodwood, um, not terribly successfully, but perhaps <laughs> I was trying a little bit too hard. But, but, but... You know the engine's in the wrong place, Duncan, on your car. Come on, own up. You know the engine is in the wrong place for a racing car. No, 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 no. I, I, I was brought up with dinky toys. And, and <laughs> all the and my, my engine's absolutely in the right place. It's all the others that got it wrong. <laughs> now, you've been, you've been a part of the Silverstone Classic from the beginning. You know, what is it you think that makes this event so special for people? Well, it, it's... It, I, we all gather there. I mean, I, I, I get there on a, on a Wednesday afternoon because I, I'm the sort of coordinator of our series. I welcome all the drivers. We have a special plan for them to, to fit into the, the garages. Somehow or other, we managed to get so many into a few garages. Um, everybody enjoys it. Um, we, we have, have an acclimatization day on, on, the, on, the web, on the Thursday. It gives us a chance to wander around the stalls meet the Ted Walkers and uh, Spencer Eltons of this world selling their wares, um, having a look at some of the, the car clubs, the Swallow Doretti's, the, yeah. uh, the Allards. Uh, yeah, a huge and, part and of the car club in the middle. Yes, the car clubs. It, it's, it's tremendous and we get such a, a good gathering. Yeah. Um, well, we very uh, much really hope to see you. Time. Yeah, we very much hope to see you then back at the wheel of your Lexus HF1 next summer. Doug, thanks for joining us. Fine, Jeff. Thank you very much indeed. Mm -hmm.